please raise your hand. Hold them up for a second so I can get around to you. How are we doing today, guys? The focus, you know, this week has been on improving. Uh, what we talked to the players about on Sunday when we watched the film was, you know, it's really, really important what kind of progress you make from the last scrimmage to the next scrimmage. Um, we're going to coach each player to the player they can be, not necessarily the player they are right now. Uh, so, you know, sometimes we have to push them a little bit to get them to understand what it takes to be a dangerous player, uh, which is what's going to make us be a dangerous team. Uh, so, you know, and that all starts with intangibles like effort, toughness, being responsible to do your job, not make mental errors, make the other team beat you. Um, so those are the kind of things that we're, you know, really working on. I think it's important that our leadership on our team, because it's difficult right now. It's hot outside, uh, it's camp, uh, people are trying to grind through it, that you know, leaders have to lead in all conditions, and they have to affect people in a positive way, and uh, that's something that we want to challenge our leadership on our team with. But, um, you know, it's uh, tough conditions. We've tried to balance the conditions that we practice with our players. Uh, we have a lot of systems and protocols in place, uh, whether it's taking breaks in practice where the players can win the ice machine or ice tent over there uh, so they can get their body temperature down. Uh, we really work hard on hydration. Uh, so we're, we're really working hard on, um, we don't go outside too much, we try to practice at night zone, it's a little cooler, we go out there sometimes in the daytime because we'll probably end up having to play a game or two uh, in the daytime. Uh, in pretty difficult conditions. I mean, it usually happens that way around here. So we're, we're trying to create a balance, you know, for that. Uh, the second scrimmage is a little different than the first scrimmage, and we try to make it a little more game-like. Uh, so, you know, players have to know the situation in the game and uh, sort of manage those things a little bit better rather than running just running out there running plays, uh, which is, you know, kind of how you start. So trying to expose our players to as many different situations that, as we can uh, as we prepare them for the season. Um, and, you know, from an injury standpoint, you know, we don't really have any new injuries. we got guys that are a little nicked up, whatever. Um, Brian Ray has, you know, come back and started practicing on a limited basis. Uh, we'll see how he progresses. Uh, Stefan Wins probably has a high ankle sprain. He'll probably be out for another week. Uh, we expect DJ Dale to start practicing on a limited basis, you know, tomorrow. Uh, those are some of the guys that have been out. Um, you know, you're probably asking about the competition at the linebacker position, and all I can tell you is there's a lot of competition there, and uh, we need somebody that will step up and be responsible to do a job, develop the confidence of the other players around them, and develop confidence in themselves that, you know, they can go out there and play winning football you know, for us regardless of the circumstance or the situation. So whichever guy steps forward to do that the best, that's who will win the job. Just start up here on the right with Charlie. Just what have you seen from your offensive line that you've liked so far on campus, especially the interior? What do you think about the overall depth there? Well, I, I like the offensive line. I, I think we've got some pretty good experience there. I like the two tackles that we have. I think they both had really good camps. We have four or five guys that can play inside uh, that have done really well. So without naming specific players, um, you know, I think we can have a really good offensive line. We've had players sort of nicked up, missing the practice here, missing the practice there. I'd like to be get them all out there so we can try to put the best group together and try to get our best five out there, which I don't know that we've ever had the chance to do to this point. But um, you know, I, I feel better about the number of players that we have at that position now than I've had most of the time in the past, so I feel pretty good about it. On the left side with Michael. With that group, how's Landon Dickinson fitting in now? He's been here about a week and a half now. I think Landon Dickerson has done a really good job. He's really tough. Uh, he's a very physical player, very smart. Uh, he's played center and guard both for us. Uh, and have that diversity as a player is uh, really important, I think. And I think he has a unique perspective on you know, coming from some place that maybe um, the 
players didn't have it quite as good as they have it around here. And I hope our players really understand you know, what they have, the opportunities that they have, and that their, their focus is really in the right place, which is on our team being good. I think sometimes you know, players don't realize, they get a little self-absorbed and they think about how things affect them. But really, playing good and winning help players more than anything else. And the reason our players get all the accolades that they get and all the notice and attention that they get is because they're good players, but it's also because we win. And I think players need to keep that in perspective because that's a very important part of why we have so many players that get opportunities at the next level and get recognized for what they do here as a football player while they're at the University of Alabama. Coach, I'll stay on the left with Cecil. Coach, um, Miller Forrest falls back at tight end. Uh, how's the competition there, particularly how's Giles Amos look to you as a kind of a walk-on candidate? Yeah, he's done a nice job and he's tough and I think he can play a role uh, for us this year. Um, we, we, we have got to make improvement at that position. You know, we have guys that have ability. They don't have a lot of experience. Uh, they need to develop confidence in A, what to do, how to do it, why it's important to do it that way. And then when they go out there and execute, do it the right way so that they develop the confidence that they need to go out and do their job well. So I think we have guys that have that are capable of doing that. Miller's probably the only guy that is sort of old enough that has enough experience um, that kind of gets it. I think the other guys are going to have to develop that, and they've made progress. Uh, so, and Giles has, you know, done a good job in taking advantage of the opportunity that he has because of the lack of depth that we had at that position. And he's got a lot of repetitions, and he's taking advantage of it. Back on the right, Miller. What caught your eye about Brian Baker during the hiring process, and how have you seen the defensive line improve under his coaching? Well, I, I like Brian. I think he has a really good personality. I think he does a good job of managing his room. He has good relationships with his players. Uh, I think they have confidence in him. I think he's very knowledgeable. He's enthusiastic about his work, uh, and the players respond well to him. But we got a lot of young players at that position uh, who need to develop uh, and need you know, to really pay attention to the fundamental details of how they need to play their position and understand uh, what it's going to take for them to be successful because we certainly need depth at the, at the defensive line and how these young guys that we have progress is going to be a real key for us. Up front here with Kurt. She's coming up, Kurt. Uh, coach, at the, I'm not asking for a comparison question. Uh, CBS has done tried to do something impossible, choose an all-time, all-star college team. And I wonder, just off the top of your head, if there's a quarterback that you've seen in your years you think is the best quarterback you've ever seen in college? You know, what comes to mind for me you ask the question about quarterbacks. It's some of the guys that, when I was a defensive coordinator in the NFL, it just happened to be that there were some really, really good quarterbacks. Um, John Elway was a really good quarterback at Stanford when I was at Ohio State, and he impressed me a lot. Uh, but he also impressed me a lot when he played for the Denver Broncos. And uh, Dan Marino impressed me a lot because it just seemed like there was a time when Ever they had to go two minutes to win the game, he was going to do it. We were head up in Cleveland, and um, you know, they got the ball back with a minute and 20 seconds or something to go in the game. And you know, he trots on the field, and you've got your guys around you, and you've been stopping them all day. And he kind of looks at you, and you kind of look at him, and the players kind of look at him, and he knows he's going to win, and your players know he's going to win. And that's a bad feeling. Um, and, um, and then he goes out and wins. So um, I remember those days. Um, more than just college. But but I think maybe there's a reason for that because I think in the NFL, the game is a little bit more quarterback oriented, if that makes sense. Um, so, but, you know, Tom Brady played really good against us when I was at Michigan State. We actually won the game 34-31 or 31-28, but 
it was because they played a different quarterback half the game. If they'd have played him the whole game, I don't know what would have happened. So um, we had an opportunity to see a lot of them. I think Trevor Lawrence played about as well against us last year in the championship game um, as anybody we've seen here in recent times. And, you know, so did their quarterback a couple years ago. So, I don't know, you kind of caught me off guard on that one a little bit. A couple quick ones here. Go, Chris. I'm going to go history, too. Um, with the 150-year anniversary celebration that's going on, as a fan or as a student of the game, do you have a favorite moment or a favorite game in college football history? Well, I'm not a fan. I've never been to a, what do you call it when you get in the parking lot? Yeah, and yeah. Out there, okay? I've never been to one of those. Um, so I can't give you a perspective from a fan standpoint. But I think college football has been really good for a lot of players. I'm sure it's very entertaining for a lot of fans. It's created a lot of opportunity for a lot of young people. Uh, to have a better chance to be successful in life, whether it's getting an education because of their ability to get a scholarship, which they may or may not have been able to go to college without. And I think the, the programs that so many good coaches through the years have had that so many players come back and say, I learned so many lessons from Coach Bryan or Woody Hayes or who, whoever they played for, uh, George Perlis, whatever. And um, so that that's the perspective that I see the game from. You know, not from the stands, not from the fans, although I, I love our fans and uh, we certainly want to have a, a great product for them to be enthusiastic about. And I think it's the game has provided a lot of entertainment and a lot of interest for a lot of people. Uh, but I think the NCAA and NCAA sports um, are fantastic for young people. And I think that's the best thing about the game uh, that I can say. Coach, we'll wrap up right here with a quick one from Ted. What qualities do you look for at the center position, maybe even outside of just athletic? Well, I think initial quickness is really important. Obviously, you have a responsibility to snap the ball uh, that starts just about every play. So your ability to do that with, especially in the gun, with accuracy. If the quarterback's under center, you, you've got to get the ball up and be able to step quickly and block somebody which everybody else on the offensive line doesn't have that task. So initial quickness is help, helpful uh, to have some explosive power to be able to get movement inside is very important and to have good enough feet to be able to slide and um, be a good pass protection person is probably another quality. But um, there are not very many guys that are really good centers that don't have a big picture understanding to make calls and help other players play better. And I think that's also a really important quality. All right, Coach, thank you. All right, thank you.